Hey everyone and welcome back to the season two finale of the Motorsport Manager Underdog Challenge. You heard that right, we will be running the last race of season two today and that will actually be the Sydney GP in Australia. Uh, that will be a home race for us as we hail from Australia. Um, and normally, well, we would have actually uh, been done last episode, but as you can see, the Sydney GP was added. Instead of running 10 races this season, we ran 11, and that is actually quite good for us as we have pretty good finances. We make a profit of about 2 million per race right now. So that means we earned 2 million extra this season that otherwise we wouldn't have had. So yeah, actually adding some races to your seasons can be quite beneficial. Something that you could opt for by uh, putting in yourself. I didn't this season, but it's definitely something that could actually get you some money. Problem is if you put forth a vote yourself, you of course also has have to pay basically. So yeah, it's not always worth it, especially if you also want to do some other votes. And let's get right into it. Uh, none of our cars crashed. So that is very good. Let's see what the interview question of the week is. You attempted a quick pit stop for Coburn during the last race, but it resulted in a mistake. I don't remember that happening, but okay. Your very own chairman criticized the move, saying that motorsport isn't the place for gambling. Um, oh. let's, let's just hurt their morale a little bit. The other option I think would hurt our chairman's happiness and... He's already not entirely, or he wasn't entirely happy with us. I think I did something to piss him off a few episodes ago, but it looks like that is gone. So yeah, we could have also taken the hit on that, to be honest. Yeah, I, I was about to say, we had a mistake-free weekend, Victor. What race were you watching? <laughs> Alright, well, again, sometimes the game just doesn't know exactly what it wants to do. Very interesting. As for our improvement of parts, again, for the last few episodes I've been saying it, we don't need to do anything on improving our performance or reliability. All the parts are pretty much done. We know which parts we're going to be taking into the next season. We actually stole a brick set from uh, the best team right now, so that was quite interesting, let's say. It's funny that there's no repercussions for that, to be honest. You can just steal breaks, apparently. More scouting reports, doesn't matter too much for us. Let's get quickly towards that last race. Um, Australia is a race we've never done in this series before, obviously, since it got voted in. It's a completely new track for our team. So let's see if we can uh, if we can make it. But first, Bieland needs some advice on love. Hey Steve, it's about my other half. I know she's not perfect, but at my age, I should start settling for what I can get. Do you think I should marry her? Um, I think the annoying other half is is bad for your mechanic relationship or morale or something like that. No, it's just yeah, mechanic relationship. This one feeling blue makes his morale bad because yeah, he broke up with uh, with his better half. But the just married, I think, adds morale for him. His morale isn't too high already because I think last time we didn't send throw a huge birthday party for him. We just send him a card, and apparently he didn't like that very much. But he's, he's still in decent morale. And it's not like anyone else is going to pick him up with his one-star skills, so... I'd rather not hurt... We just got, I think, on him the trait where we can do quick pit stops, and I really like that one. So, don't settle, man. Follow your heart. She's not the right girl for you. You'll find someone better, okay? That is going to leave him feeling blue. As you can see, that is 30, minus 30 morale, but it's only for four weeks, so he gets over the breakup quite quick, apparently. That's not too bad. Anyway, we still have him for 13 months, so it's not like we absolutely need him to uh, to re-sign with us or anything. We might not even keep him. At the end of the season, we're obviously going to be looking at what is out there. Uh, Bjelland has very good marketability, as you can see, 100%. And uh, him being a pay driver is, of course, also insanely good. But next season, it would be nice if we can do a little bit better. And for that, we ideally do want a driver that actually knows how to drive a car. And I am pretty sure Bjorn doesn't. Sydney, then. It will be a 22 lap race. And the lap length is 3.6 miles. There is a 40% chance of rain. So let's keep an eye on that. And something that is actually quite fun that we haven't done before yet. This race will actually carry super softs. Now, uh, with our current 
league rule set, there is only pretty much two tires that will be shown at any time. So, for example, most of the time we've had uh, softs and mediums. I think one time maybe we've had mediums and hards. Uh, in this case, the mediums were replaced by super soft. So the softest is the hardest uh, tire compound that we will have available this weekend. And to be frank, that isn't very good for our drivers because uh, Coburn and Bieland both have horrible smoothness stats. So they are not good at keeping their tires up, which is a shame. I can't believe Coburn is complaining about the pit crew, to be honest. You've destroyed your car at least three times this season, maybe even four. So... Yeah, maybe don't uh, don't throw uh, stones in a glass house, huh? All right, so let's have a quick look at the cars, but I think everything is fine. I fiddled around with it a little bit last episode because we were looking at these brakes. Yeah, like I said last episode, when this number is purple, it means you have the best brake or any other part in the league. That's also why you see it with these spec parts. Uh, these are all purple. That's just because everyone else has the exact same part. But in this case, it actually matters because that means all the other teams are worse except the one team that we stole this brake set off. So that's quite nice. Um, I think green just means it's our best part. So that doesn't really tell you much, to be honest. I wish they made something, some other indication that your part is pretty good, for example, like top three or top five or top half or something at least, but it doesn't really. All you have to go on is this metric here, where you are right now. When we're not even fitting it, then obviously it's not anywhere. But yeah, interesting how that goes. Right now we're actually in second for the brakes. So that is very good at the very least. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like brakes will be too important here. Acceleration will be key. And the other two are spec parts. So the race isn't really in our favor. But let's see, maybe a bit of rain can actually do something good for us. We are still very much into the mid-table fight. And yeah, as you can see, this is Sydney for the first time. Beautiful looking map, a bit of a mix of uh, the Black Sea, honestly, with the beach, and then also, I guess, the Ardennes a little bit, with all the uh, all the trees. So it's a nice little mix of both, I think, which is basically what Australia is. A bunch of beaches and nature. Very nice. And as always, we're going to be running Coburn and Dior because of their feedback ratings. And let's have a look. No, not at you, Axel. Well, sorry, cancel. Let's have a look at Coburn, because she is representative of the smoothness stat that both of our drivers have. And how long can your tires last for? Alright, yeah, so they did adapt the lap times. So as you can see now, the softs actually have still a really good speed rating, but they will actually last quite long on this track. Whereas the, soft, the super softs are basically now the softs of last episode. And they only last for 6 to 8. I think we said we had 26 laps to go. Or 22. I already forgot. Either way, I don't think we can make a two-stop work on super softs. We could potentially do it on softs. And if you look at the speed difference, honestly, it's not that much. About half a star. So I think we might just run both our drivers only on softs, try and get the best possible finish we can. And this will also allow us to run the tires a little bit more aggressively, whereas on the super softs, we would basically have to... Um, Play very conservatively for the whole race. Which is never that fun. Alright, Axel. Same setup for you. Put you right on the start there. Would have been nice if Axel here was a pay driver. Because we would have actually gotten about 50% of his pay driver uh, bonus. After every race. On top of just getting Bieland and Coburn's pay driver skills. So that would have been another 100,000 per race, let's say. But uh, alas, he is no pay driver. We got him basically just for the feedback rating, which is still very nice. It's something that you really want for all this uh, extra knowledge. Not something we absolutely needed, but when Bieland was out, Dior also did very well. So I definitely don't regret getting him, despite him being a little bit more expensive than maybe you want your reserve driver to be. On the other hand, we are not dying for cash, so also not the end of the world, let's say. Alright, 76% of a poor, your sh yeah, let's say put you right around there. You there, and you're already great, so let's just put you a tiny smidge to the right of it, I guess. And you are very poor, so we weren't even in the ballpark on this one. Let's put you something like way out here. 
you. Let's say, mwah. let's do right there. Since you are okay already, we do need to put you a tiny bit extra, but maybe not too much. Something like this, maybe. Alright, let you go again. I really love just breaking them out twice, because with their stats, they can sort of almost always get the level 3 bonus. As long as we give them enough drive time, but... Of course, it depends a bit on luck, too, where we can get. 91% is pretty good. It was poor here, good there. And we went wrong on the speed balance, too. So I guess we know for both sort of where we should go. I think for you, it's a little bit more to the left. And for you, it's a little bit more to the left as well. Something like that. That should almost be perfect or great, I think. Nope. I mean, you should obviously be back on where you were since you were excellent. I think we'll bring in Coburn once more. I know it's already above a 90% rating. Which is normally where I just keep them out. But it looks like the or anyway will also still have to do one more since we just got him to a okay. I think a little bit more to the left. Something like this maybe. And the rest of you are perfectly fine. Let's put you here. Here. Oop. No. Let's see, maybe that gets him to another excellent, who knows. <laughs> Alright, then we'll bring him in one more time just for the downforce. Because I'm not sure that is going to do it. Yeah, not perfect basically, but... Not the end of the world to do it like this, I think. You are good now. That didn't go much better then, did it? Oh, well, we are at 95 now, so... I guess we're closer. I'm not going to bother too much with it anymore now. So let's just send you out. The remainder, 95% is more than good enough. And you are now excellent, excellent, excellent. Okay, that is perfect. 98%. Let's keep it at that. Alright, then let's see what they can still do for us. Probably at least a level 2. Level 3 is looking doubtful. But I'm not too unhappy about a level 2. We did have to bring them in, I think, 4 times now in total. So, makes sense they wouldn't be able to uh, get us that level 3 bonus, to be honest. But as long as they're happy with their car, I'm happy, let's just say. We are much slower, but I also gave them way more fuel. That costs them, I think, at least half a second, maybe a full second, depending on how much fuel you put in. So. And they're also on old tires and not even on super soft, so not exactly uh, worried about that. Doesn't mean we don't have a lot less pace than everyone else. But, uh, yeah. Let's see what we can do on race day, where it really matters. First of all, check the rain. 40% chance is a lot, but doesn't look like anything. And then let's get the usual bonuses. As always, we're not taking engine expert. The only thing I am considering is doing this one. I do love not having mistakes, basically. Question is... Do we want to give him the performance or the risk taker? I'm sure there's a mathematical optimum that whichever one of these you should take, but I don't know it, so let's just go with risk taker for you. I think that's fine. Yeah, like I said, uh, well, it was 22, so I was half right. I said both numbers, but I didn't know which one it was. If we run 7, well, we could do super soft, super soft, and then soft actually since we're gonna have to stop twice anyway so maybe i should have actually given us these super softs for some reason i just really thought it was 26 i think that was last race um hmm. all right fair enough let's let's run you then on super and you i think maybe on softs first but you are in first if you can hold on to that, would be quite nice. But you never hold on to it anyway, so. <laughs> uh, we could just space them around like this. Then Coburn has to go first, then Bjelland goes around lap 9, I guess. Well, let's say we do 8 laps with Bjelland. We just put his uh, engine to orange. And we do... 
Seven laps with you. If we can. Can we though? Then we can't run the tires hard at all, basically. Because seven for her is just average. So if we run red on the first lap, that probably means we're gonna only be able to do about six laps on the super soft. It really doesn't seem like there's much of a difference between the tires in terms of speed. At half a star, uh, the, the difference I feel between mediums and softs is way larger than between super softs and soft. And then you also have to factor in that these super softs have a higher cliff percentage. Right? At the softs, I think at 10% they drop off, harshly. Uh, whereas the super softs drop already off at 15%, so you can't even run them for that long either. I think... Alright, we'll, we'll keep it like this for now. We'll keep them spaced like this. Do six or seven laps with Joanne, depending on what we can make work. We do eight laps with Bjorn. And then we see how far we can get. Either way, uh, we can't burn your tires too hard, but we can burn the engine, of course. And for you, we won't burn your engine as hard, but we will burn your tires. And that will have to do. We'll probably lose quite some spots because of this. Because I'm not giving them everything they need, but... Yeah, we gotta work with what we have, I suppose. And let's see. Uh, not a good start for Bjelland, but he does manage to hold on to first. For now. And <laughs> that didn't last long. Alright, well, in second, Coburn is doing alright. Keeping sixth, just about. And it is a beautiful track at the very least. Looks so good. A little rocks here, all the verticality. Very nice. Um, alright. Also quite a long track, actually. Have a look then. Yeah, with Bjelland we're gonna try to do about 8 laps, which he should be able to do when we put him on orange for the entire stint. Yeah, he should pass the finish at around 7.9. And you are obviously burning harder, but we're only trying to do about 6 laps with you, I think. 6 or 7, depending on what we can make work. But we are sort of holding our own somehow, so that's not too bad. We're of course also burning harder than most probably are still at this point. Someone cut a corner here. Tulipano. Alright. Oh, looks like he was cleared. Fair enough. Still third with Bjelland for now, but people are pushing him quite hard. And one of those people is actually Coburn, who is of course on the softs. And this is actually an opportunity for her to maybe take that spot. If we tell... Uh, if we tell Bjelland here to move over, that might actually be smart since she's on the super softs. We don't want her to be fighting Bjelland the whole time. Let's let her through. Let's see what that does. Yeah, there you go. Alright, and now you can just race again. As she's already on the super soft, so she should have way more pace than him. So let's see. Yeah, he's already dropping off much quicker now too. Maybe you can hold up some of the competitors uh, for a little bit that uh, Coburn might have. And if not, that's also not the end of the world. Alright. Now we've done two full laps now. We want to be doing at least five more if possible with Coburn, but that does mean we need to ease up on the tires at the very least, I think. We barely don't have enough fuel to run on red for the rest of the stint, but we can run on red for still quite a bit, I think. Apart from that, she'll just have to make do with what she gets. For you, you should probably be fine. Your tires can last really long. So we can just keep it on... Well, let's maybe put it on orange because your temperature is going up quite quickly. Have another look at the weather. No rain still. So it looks like for our second stint, we'll probably just using the usual tires. Yeah, this looks just about fine. Coburn lost the spot there, same for Bieland. But yeah, since he's on softs, it really isn't too surprising, to be honest. Temperature is looking okay. You can kind of... The temperature is going down for Coburn, but on the other hand, if we're going to try and make her last for another four laps now, can we even? 
Unless, like, we play conservatively, maybe? I don't know. Because we've done three full laps now. We're giving her all the engine power she can have, but I'm not sure that will be enough. Did she actually overtook someone? No, almost. Not bad though. Especially on uh, conservative tires. Good try, good try. Let's have a look. Bieland, you need to do four more laps after this. You need to do three more after this. Which should theoretically be possible, but... Hmm. Not sure. But the coldness is getting there a little bit. We need to ease back and go back into neutral. Ah. Alright, cross the line. Let's have a look. We have 47% left. At 15, obviously the tires pretty much drop off completely, so... Yeah. We only have 32% left. Hmm. 32% for three laps, theoretically it should be possible, but... Anyway, we uh, if we're going to try and do three laps, we need to now ease off the fuel, for sure. And for you, I think, yeah, we need to, we want to do four more laps. Both your tires and your fuel level should handle that. So let's, let's ease up on the tires for now. All right, not too bad so far. Coburn is holding her own. Bieland is doing okay, especially considering the tires we gave him. Let's see where we can get. In hindsight, I, I didn't really expect that we could make the super softs last for enough because of the uh, total lap time, but turns out we can, so it sucks a bit for the performance bonuses that we chose, but I think it's still worth to go for the super softs where possible. As you can see, Bieland is struggling a little bit more on his softs, but we'll see what happens. Yep, you are struggling. Only 20% left. The problem is... The heating. We need to keep that heat up. And I am not sure that we can make another lap work, to be honest. Let's say we were to pit now. Then we have 16 laps to go. If we do, let's say, another 6 on Super Soft. We have 10 to go, but we won't have enough fuel, obviously. Because we only get 9 laps worth. So if we do, do want to do another super soft run, we need to make it last for 7 laps at least. And then the last one could be 9. Pretty much perfectly. Alternatively, we could go on the softs, run very aggressively, both on fuel and on our tires. That might be better, to be honest. I'm not sure. Let's see, let's first get a bit closer to the pit lane and see what our tires will be doing in the meantime. But I don't think we're going to be able to make another... Another lap work. Yeah, we're only halfway into this one. And I think we need a minimum like 10 to 12% for a tire to stay alive for one whole lap. By the time we're crossing the finish, we're just not making that. So no, we cannot make another lap work for Coburn. So let's just start chunking through the fuel and the tire. Should have done that a little bit earlier, maybe. But that's okay. All right, we can get the roundup bonus. I do think we might stick for another round of super softs. And give you the fast pit stop, as always. You and the other end are doing perfectly fine. You can do two more laps after this. Let's start just going through that tire. Don't need to be too conservative now anymore. And Coburn is the first to get into the pit. Let's hope there's no mistakes. Looking good. And looking good. All right, perfect. Good job, Coburn. Let's not put you on red red. <laughs> um, again, we can put our fuel a little bit aggressive, but our tires not so much. You are doing perfectly fine. A little bit back. Uh, we need these tires to last for another lap and a half, let's say. And then we can put him probably on his stint of uh, super softs. Give him a little bit more power than he's used to now. 
but not too bad here. I think uh, we managed to stick ahead of some people at least by decent amount of margins. Five seconds, almost ten seconds, so not too bad there. All right, we crossed the finish at 130. We can run red, red. Let's wait a little bit on the fuel for now. Yeah. Don't want to go a little bit too hard on it and then we don't have enough fuel at all anymore. For you, we have 14 laps left, so we can do... Theoretically, we can do twice super soft, but... Let's see how it actually goes. For some reason, the fuel counter just doesn't... Recognize that we would actually have a little bit of fuel left, even though I'm 99% sure that we would. But I don't want to jinx it and uh, mess up the roundup thing for Bieland. Let's put him at a little bit more orange for a while, and that should be fine then. Yeah, now we're going to get him with 0 0.03. And let's get him on his first set of super softs. That should help him in the speed. And we have the nice um, trait that he can have quick pit stops with low chances of mistakes. Let's see where that gets us. Yeah, I know he's, he's destroying his tires, but 7% left for two corners should be perfectly fine. Alright. Good. Let's see how his pit stop goes. <laughs> the park choppers on a, on a football field. Interesting. Alright, all the tires went well. Front and rear jack. Good. Refueling. All right. And get out there in front of everyone else. Perfect. Again, don't push your tires too hard, but you can burn a bit of fuel. <laughs> Just stop that guy dead in his tracks. That sucks for you, the wolf. Uh, I'm sure he's going to get his revenge because he is much better than us, but that was pretty funny. Coburn over here is uh, basically provisionally fit because Kumar here still needs to do a pit stop. He actually made those... Uh, Super softs last longer than most people even on soft. Interesting. Good for you, buddy. He is also quite up front, but I don't think he'll be uh, ahead of us still when he is done with the pit. We are a little bit too close for that, I think, which is nice. All right, then Coburn. How many more laps do we need to do with you if we want to do another super soft run is the question. And let's answer that right now as we just cross the finish. Uh, we will have 13 laps remaining, indeed. So, we have 3.5 left, so at best we're going to be able to do 3 more laps. No, wait, that's not true. That was showing me for next lap. Yeah, we are at 4.88 now. So, at best we have 4 more laps, basically. Unless we run on blue engine mode, but I'm not a fan of that. Let's say we do 4 more. Then we have 8 still to go. Yeah, 8 basically means that we won't make it on another set of super softs, and I think that's fine. I think um, 8 is good enough to at least be able to run the engine on orange for the rest of the stint, and we can run the, saw the softs very aggressively, which is fine. So let's do that. That means we can run on orange for a little while, maybe one more round, and then we need to pull back to... Uh, yellow. Uh, sorry, not yellow. To orange. And um, the tires are probably kind of fine on yellow. And maybe later on in the race we'll put them to orange. For you, Bialand, let's just run you like this for now. I think that's perfectly fine. And let's keep going for a little bit. Coburn is actually sort of holding their own, which is very commendable. Kind of keeping to the pack there. Or a uh, red behind Marchetta, Gerard, everyone else. Bananen is catching up a little bit, it seems. About three seconds behind. Same for Chu and the Wolf. Uh, the Wolf is another four seconds behind, so he's not having a great race, to be honest. Eh. Well, not too bad for us. Anyway, Coburn has had two sets of Super Soft, so... It would have been a surprise if she made a third one work. Bieland here, on the other hand, should get another round of Super Soft. Uh, we'll probably also do some calculations for you, to be honest. Put you to orange. And we're going to do two more with you. Once we've crossed the finish line. 
Yeah, basically perfectly too. Um, right? Yeah, if we were to pit stop now, we get 10. But we're going to do two more rounds. Wait, no, then we're going to be at 9. Hmm. Okay, I miscalculated a bit then. Well, either way, at 9 is fine. And we're going to just run the softs anyway, like we said. So, let's put you on something like medium for a little bit. Since the tires are fine, let's put those to orange. And for you, let's see when you cross the finish... Alright, we can do again for you also. We could do 4 or 5 if we really wanted to, but we don't need to, I think. We have 11 laps remaining, so we do another 4. We should be at about 7. Yeah. Um, 7, theoretically, we could make another super soft work, so that's probably what we'll do. So let's just go for 4. We'll have to uh, pull his fuel back soon-ish too, but that's not a problem at all. Coburn is doing surprisingly well, honestly. The people behind her are catching up, which is a problem. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, we knew that would probably happen anyway. Banana in here uh, has the fresher tires, let's just say. Ooh, went a little bit too hard on the tires there. That might cost us. Let's put you an orange there. We do need to, yeah, at 15% she hits that cliff, so thought we'd be kind of fine to be honest but it doesn't really look like it might even have to go on backup for the last little bit if we want to keep that tire fresh enough that's not great <laughs> let's put you on orange yeah you're battling now but basically without any fighting uh, power in you sorry but i really don't want you to hit your cliff before you pit let's get you ready to pit 10 laps remaining that means nine when we pit just about enough fuel and tires that will be fresh enough to last you till the end of the race, which is of course very good. Yeah, I know this is the cold is obviously hurting the tires soon, but at the very least we won't be hitting the plant with till she basically goes in the pit line, so it's just the way it has to be, unfortunately. At the very least she didn't hit it till she was right going into the pit line, so that's perfect. No mistakes again. Very good. All right. And uh, yeah, obviously we can't burn your fuel too hard because you need to run out on those. But you should have, yeah, you have excess fuel. Perfect. For you, 35 should be okay. But the problem is again, temperature. Pick that up a little bit. I don't want to push it too hard, but I would really like to make it work for you do not have to pit with uh, these tires also. Um, yeah, you should be okay. I think. Or just about the same as Bialand, where you hit the cliff right at the end there. But if we don't make this work, then he basically doesn't get his second set of super softs. So, I have to just suck it up, buddy. Let's get you ready to pit. Just about enough fuel, perfect. And... Yeah, 7 laps remaining. Also perfect. Give you the super soft. Get you something at least. You can run your engine very aggressively. As you uh, have a lot of fuel to spare. Let's see where that gets us. Like I said, we can run her tires quite aggressively. She doesn't have too much... Uh, well, do like orange maybe. Okay. 20%. 19%. Oof, 18 it's dropping a lot quicker than I would want it to. 17. Back up. 16. I know, I know. It's hurting your tires, but... We really needed to not hit that cliff. Alright, there you go. That's, again, he hits the cliff right as he goes into the pit stop, so we... <laughs> we made it work, but barely. Okay. Everyone is pitting now. People are coming out again, but I think Coburn should overtake most of them. Yep, there you go. Well, not that guy. And he kind of stopped us in our track too, which is annoying, but... Whatever, I suppose. Alright, yeah. Let's let's keep these tires sort of like this. Don't want to hurt them too much. We still have seven laps to go, I think. Yeah, so... 
let's not uh, go overboard. Lots of people still need to pit, but not sure we're going to be overtaking quite that many of them. Yeah, not sure about those guys. Six laps remaining, but that's from someone who's just already gone past the finish line. Alright, let's keep going. Yeah, even with some people pitting. Oh, you're still in 11th. That's not too bad, to be honest. Problem is you can't really fight because we can't give you much... Uh, much in terms of fuel. So that sucks a little bit. Same story for Bjelland. Well, we can give him the fuel but not the tires. And the other way around, we can give Coburn the tires but not the fuel. Which I think is just sort of... Damned if you do, damned if you don't when you're a small team. Um, we just don't have the resources that the bigger teams have. For, like the car being as good or as fuel efficient. The drivers being as good for the tires that you can make them last way longer. Basically, if we had two Dior's right now in the car, these lap times would basically not be an issue at all. Because we could make the tires work for so much longer. But, alas. That is not something we get to choose. Really can't be... I'm too hard on these tires to be honest. I know she's trying to defend against two people, but anyway, they're on super softs or way fresher softs, so. Yeah. That is what it is. Let's just try and get a decent result. Coburn is still very much in a fight for a good mid table spot, so. Originally, this is about what it's gonna be, unless we uh, get overtaken a bunch or overtake other people. So everyone has now pitted twice, and I don't really see anyone that will have to pit again. With only four laps to go now. Let's have a look at our situation. About four laps of fuel left, so we can give you a little bit of fuel. For two laps, let's say. And um, your tires are looking fine too, but we can't really push them too hard anymore. Same for you, to be honest. Except your fuel is, of course, way better, so we can keep burning that. Not that it matters much, because you are dead last. <laughs> Yelland is obviously not a good driver. His car is also worse than Coburn's, and it shows, let's just say. All right. See if this is enough, at least, for Coburn to stay ahead of her competition. I think Jonsson here is going to have trouble, actually, soon, because her tires are already looking quite old. And she still hasn't overtaken any of us yet, so... I think even if she now manages to overtake, she'll struggle to retain that position because she's going to be in the lower bandwidths very soon. Plus, she might have some real trouble not getting hit by the cliff, basically, on the supers, so... Let's see how that goes. Alright, three more laps. But I kind of pull you back now on, uh, on that. Anyway, it doesn't look like you're passing anyone, so let's not worry too much about that. With three laps to go... We have just about 10% on the tire per lap, so before we hit the cliff, of course. Oh, yeah, see, I told you. And so the is gonna hit probably one of the few. Maybe Rogers might opt for the same, but uh, it's gonna be a hard frame also at 34% to make it work, I think. But let's see. We are, I think, perfectly fine on our tires, except for Bielantis. Looking a little bit like he might struggle. But he should be fine, to be honest. He gets a bit more than 10% on each of his laps. Just have to make sure he stays above that cold. And then uh, we should do okay. And I have to push you back on the fuel now. Still says excess fuel, but that's not by a lot. We don't want to mistime it. Bjelland got two spots back, because Jon Sadir and Liao actually both pitted. Liao, actually, that's your... Yeah, I was about to say, that has to be your third pit stop, right? Yeah. Not sure if some people ahead of us might still opt for one. Yeah, Rogers has to already really conserve, which is funny. Let's see if we can keep Cavacanti behind us. Gonna look a little bit tight. Give you a little bit of fuel again. Can't give him too much, but I can give him a little bit. Tire wear is hurting for you. Sorry, the cold, so let's get that back up. If need be, we can always just put it to blue, even if it hurts uh, the tires a little bit. That just is what it is, basically. Put it back like that for now. Oh yeah, 15% to play with, actually, so... 16 even, for now. Actually, that's that's not too bad. You obviously don't have that much to play with, so let's put you back. 
Yeah, we're probably going to have to do backup mode for a little while. But if he can stay ahead of 19th and 20th, that would be very nice. Put you back to conservative. I know that's going to hurt his heating, but... Not like we have much of a choice. <laughs> I'd rather he make it on... Uh, before hitting the cliff at least, because these people will catch up real quick if he hits that cliff. And he's not going to overtake anyone ahead of him anyway. Coburn, give you a last little push. Come on. Give you the tires, give you everything. Ah, you just about didn't get, manage to get number 10 there, but 11th I think is still one spot better than I thought you could get. I think Tulipano here hit his cliff, so that makes sense. With Bjelland we hit our own cliff right at the very end, but he managed to stay ahead of the two people that pitted, so that is very nice. Yeah, like I said, one of these people was going to struggle, and Rogers, we were very close to getting him. He also hit his cliff, but he barely managed to squeeze it out. Tulipano over there wasn't so lucky and he actually lost two spots due to that. Not bad at all, I think. Um, yeah, obviously Bjelland was never really in the running for a good spot. He did fine in the first stint, but as soon as we uh, as soon as soon we put him on the super softs, actually, he started to really drop off. That's obviously also when we gave him less to play with. Uh, less tire power, less engine power, everything. But still, him having uh, finished above Jon Satir and Liao is a few free points, let's just say. And Coburn with the 11th finish is very nice. Hopefully that was enough for us to keep that 7th spot. But you never know in car racing. And we might have still gotten something. Nah, Tulipano was already below us. He got a 10 second time penalty, but looks like it didn't matter. Oh, and Bjelland, Bjelland actually did go up one spot because Dreyfus here was demoted 8 spots. That sucks for her. All right, nice. Uh, that means we got another free two points. 20 plus 8 points, 28 points in total. Not bad at all. That should be a uh, pretty good finish. Obviously, we didn't get our sponsor bonus, but... Well, we got a decent amount of points, and I'm very happy about that. Because indeed, we managed to, well, keep 7th, despite Archer BMR here actually getting the same amount of points as us. But apparently... Yeah, I, I don't know what this is based on. Why we get to keep number 7. It's not based on alphabetical order, that's for sure. <laughs> because P comes a lot later. Uh, we were also very close to uh, ZRT Autosport here. They got 194 points, so... Barely managed to hold on to that spot. But very happy that we got 7th in our second season. That is a lot better, I think, than, uh, than up front I would have thought with the cars that we got. So, not a bad finish at all. Have a look what people think of that. Try spending less money on helicopters and jacuzzis and more on your cars, Steve. All right, well, that's fair. We, we do have a huge jacuzzi budget, but they're necessary for the drivers, all right? And for the sponsors. We uh, That's how we make money. You got to spend to make, all right? All right, let's see what that does for us. I think everyone should be quite happy with that. Wait, we came in 10th? Really? With such a good finish? Wow. That's disappointing. I guess that worked out sort of perfectly that all the teams worse than us somehow got very high finishes with one driver and very low with the other or something. All right, well, game because I would have loved it if our marketability could have gone a little bit more up, but nonetheless, not too unhappy about all of that. Our drivers aren't really improving anymore, except for Dior, who is our reserve driver. And we earn just about another two full million. Not bad. Let's keep going, and that we should see the ending statistics. Yeah, there you go. The world champion is Matthias the Wolf, a guy we've seen uh, overtake us quite a few times because he is just that much better. He earns quite a salary too. That is a salary that we cannot pay. Well. We can. We don't want to. Team principal of the season is the guy also from Eastwood Motorsports. I'm pretty sure that's also the team that we stole our brake set from. So hopefully they promote and they won't notice next season when we're running their brake set. Jan Satir is their second driver. Of course, also getting some accolades and they're getting a decent amount of prize money as they also won the Constructor Championship. But I think for us in a seventh place, we have definitely shown ourselves now as a mid-table team. Hopefully in Season 3 we can do even better than 7th. Um, that is, of course, all up for grabs as a new season will start. Very luckily, somehow we managed to stay ahead of 
Archer BMR here. I don't know what the criteria for that is, but be very curious. Uh, if anyone else does know, let me know in the comments because I have no clue. All right. Now we have almost 10 million. And we could theoretically buy something again, of course, for our HQ. Now the most pressing concerns, I think, are either a design center level 2, which we don't have the money for yet, as it's 15 million, or none of these, because we don't really need them. Um, we could build a brakes R&D facility, but we actually have the best brakes in the league right now, because we stole them. It's very funny, we never actually built a building for it, but uh, the brakes are actually our best part now. Obviously, these other ones we don't need just yet either, because these are all for spec parts, uh, like the rear wing or the engine or the front wing. The forecasting center isn't really necessary either. We do fine during the rain, to be honest. And the staff center, again, I don't care about improving our driver's fitness or focus or even our staff much, because we won't be sticking with them for very long term anyway. Upgrades, of course, are possible, but again, I, at most I would consider upgrading the telemetry center. And that might just be what we do. But I think first what we'll do is wait for a tiny little bit. It doesn't take long before we will get all the end of season money bonuses. Like uh, what we saved up for the car. Uh, and uh, the prize money for finishing 7th. So I don't think we need to already make a commitment. But for now I think design center and the upgraded telemetry center. To really make our gearbox shine during next season will be the main goals. A third outsider is maybe the scouting facility because right now I haven't seen any drivers that interest me. I'm very curious to see if any free agents become available during the off season that we can snag up with good marketability. I'll have a look off camera. Not sure about that yet, but for 5 million, I'm not sure that's the right choice just yet. So we'll see. But first, let's just see how much money we have. I think for now, this was a great finish to the episode and the season. I won't take a long break or anything. I'll just start making season three videos immediately after this again. So you won't have to wait too long for the next episode. Um, seventh, very nice finish. I think uh, it's a great continuance from a good first season. Season two, I think we did better in terms of at least car design. Made sure that we were done very early in the season. Not like uh, first season. We ran better races. We actually got one podium place already in season two, which was quite early. And I hope we can do even better in Season 3, where we will have a car that is actually in a much better fighting shape, uh, especially considering that we can now start using those illegal parts we made that we couldn't use for this entire season. I'm very curious to see how that will go. Um, yeah, if you stuck with me for now over 20 episodes, I want to say thank you very much for watching. I honestly didn't expect that many people would actually watch this at all. So to see uh, something like, I don't know, 30 to 50 views per episode, an actual good watch time, Makes me very happy, honestly. So thank you very much for sticking with this and uh, I'll see you in season three.